If you have observed our PCB review videos, you might have noticed some weird cuts on the substrate layer, which I used to cut off the individual PCB from a bigger panel. On many occasions, panelizing the PCB is taken care by the fab house. But in this video, we'll see how we can do that by ourselves within KeyCAD and also understand why it's necessary to panelize the PCB. It's very cumbersome to work with individual PCBs, especially when you want to make a bunch of them. That's the reason companies use various third-party services to assemble their PCBs. And in some cases, they use pick-and-place machines to automate the assembly process in-house. But in all these cases, it would be very difficult to work with individual PCBs, especially if they are tiny. That's the reason fabrication plants batch all the PCBs together into a panel, which would make it super easy to work in terms of transportation, assembly and soldering. In industries, they use softwares like Fab3000 or some form of paid software to make this process easier. But today we'll learn how to do this for free just using KeyCAD. Now, before that, how do we arrange the PCB on a panel? There are two basic ways, V-score or mouse bytes. Let's start with the V-score, which involves adding grooves to the panel for easy breaking later on. Think of it like scoring cardboard in a craft project. Luckily, most manufacturers support this method and it's straightforward to implement in KeyCAD. To begin, open the PCB editor directly instead of the KeyCAD project. There are many reasons why you should do this. First, we can keep our main PCB intact while creating a panel. Second, the append function works only when the PCB editor is opened independently. And without this append function, it would be very difficult to add multiple circuits to the same panel. Now to append the PCB, go to File, Append Board, Navigate and select the PCB that you want to panelize. Once we have the PCB on the editor, we need to check for a few things so the panelization can happen without any hassle. First. Convert the existing edge cut layer into user's draw drawing. Then make sure none of the traces are very close to the outline of the board. Say there should be at least a clearance of 1mm from the edge cut layer. So it doesn't affect the PCB during breakoff. Next, it's really important you group all the components on the PCB. You can do that by selecting the entire PCB and right click. Under grouping, select the option group. Now this entire PCB will behave as an individual unit. This way we won't mess up the routing or the component placement within the PCB. We can just focus on the panelization. Finally, get the dimension of the PCB which we'll use for spacing when we make the panel. With all this check, we can start the process. Select the PCB, right click and under create from selection, select create array. Let's say we want a total of 6 PCBs in a panel with 2 rows and 3 columns and enter the width and the height of the PCB with a 2mm offset on the horizontal spacing and the vertical spacing to mark the scoring line. For now, I chose the number of PCBs in a panel at random. But in your case, you need to check with the fab house to know what is the minimum and maximum size required for a panel. Anyway, before applying these settings, make sure the option existing reference designator is selected and then click on OK. We can see this creates a beautiful 2D array of the PCBs. Now with this, we can add the edge cut layer to this entire PCB array to make the boundary of our panel. Once the panel is ready, let's add some instruction on the fab layer to indicate where we need the V-score to be done. Go to the line tool and add the line across the PCB where we need the scoring to be done. And change the width of the line to 2mm because most of the manufacturers use a 2mm bit to make this scoring. Just to make it more clear, I'll also drop a text where the v-scoring should be done. And this completes the v-scored panel. So with this, we can just generate a Gerber file and place the order. But this kind of panel has a flaw. This v-scoring technique works only on a sharp angled PCB. It wouldn't work with PCBs that have connectors sticking out or PCBs that are curved, similar to the ones we made in the KeyCAD series. In that case, we need to use tabs and mouse bytes. If you have been watching this video for this long and think it's helpful, make sure to give it a sub. Also, please check out our Patreon page to support us. Mouse bytes are very similar to creating a perforated edge on a paper which is easy to tear. You can see similar perforated marks on all the PCBs that I received from various manufacturers. Anyway, to do this in KeyCAD, first we need to download and install the custom mouse byte footprint in KeyCAD. I really like this particular footprint and used it quite a few times in the past. You can download this footprint by going to this URL and adding it to KeyCAD. If you're not sure how to do that, please check out this video. Once the footprint is ready, make sure to select a proper grid size that matches your board outline. In my case, it's 0.25mm. 
and try to keep the grid settings to 0.25, 0.5 or 1mm to make the array repetition easier. Now with this grid setting, I'll use the grid origin tool to mark the center of the PCB. Once the footprint is ready, add the mouse byte to the PCB along the four sides of the PCB. Also, I'm making sure to keep these perforated holes close to the edge as they will be our breakpoints. And we don't want to accidentally break a chunk of our PCB at a later stage. The placement looks pretty good. Let's draw some edge cut for the tabs and also redraw the PCB edge cut layer such that it passes through these tabs. Once the entire PCB is done, delete these two tabs. It might be confusing why we are deleting these tabs, but trust me, this is very much needed when we are applying the array tool. Now we can just follow the same process as before to do the panelization. Create an array with the dimension we got from the PCB plus tab. This panel should be good after cleaning up the excess mouse bytes and open edge cuts. But if you are making the panel for a pick and place machine, I would recommend adding an additional 8mm rail to the panel which would make the assembly and transportation process way easier. You can also add mounting points to the rails which can be used in testing or the assembly process. There are so many other features that can be added to the panel but we'll see those in the future videos. Anyway, after these additional features and a little bit of cleanup, we can just export the Gerber file and upload it for manufacturing. This whole panelization process might look a little tedious especially doing it manually on KiCad. That's the reason many fab houses use paid software to do this in a faster way. In the next video, we'll see how we can automate this panelizing process using a KiCad plugin and some third party application. Finally, this brings us to the end of the video. And if you have any questions regarding this video or any topic related to PCB, you're always welcome to drop a question in the PCB Cupid Q&A section. Until the next video, keep learning and keep creating.